Bear Bets Podcast is back. I am your host, Ms. Felica. Jeff Schwartz is here in our New York studios. Sammy P. and Will Hill will join us for the gambling group chat shortly. Well, it's never it's never dull. It's never uh, no uninteresting in the uh, in, in the NFL. That, that's much for sure. It is the injuries this year for quarterbacks have just been brutal, man. Like we're going to joke about it in, the, in the gambling group chat about the primetime unders as we talk about all these games for this week. Um, but they're going under because the quarterbacks stink because everyone's hurt. I mean, like that's the thing is all these quarterbacks are injured in the NFL, and you know it we every week it's someone new it's a sean watson this week and i'm sure next week will be someone else but hope know, not stafford's coming back which is nice at least you get one one veteran back in the lineup josh Dobbs is playing well as a backup and and that's your great stories obviously around the nfl for some of these guys that are playing but the quarterbacks are just getting hurt it's a bad year for, for quarterback injuries it is and one quarterback that you mentioned stafford coming back Tyler murray came back last week and led the cardinals to a to a comeback win against team that I love betting against the Atlanta Falcons. Um, anyone that wants to wager on the Falcons, it, it's amazing that every week it seems the Falcons get like support in the market. Finally, this week it won't happen because the Cardinals don't play. Um, I mean, the, uh, the Falcons don't. The play. Falcons are the team over the years. I've been wagering since mostly like 2017 since I retired um, that they have given me the most trouble. They're the team I just, I can't either direction over under on the Falcons against the Falcons, they're the worst team to wager on, in my opinion. Just my personal, like, least hair team to wager on over the years. I don't like it. Did Arthur Smith be on thin ice there? Probably not. But I think it was foolish to go in the season to think Desmond Ritter was your guy. Correct. That's the problem. Right. Uh, and that's, is that his fault or the GM's fault? I don't, that's that's the question, right? GM is probably, probably is the GM, one but that Yeah, but the coaches always get blamed first, right? General managers rarely get blamed. The coach right. goes first. That, that, that's what I, I love. I love that. Like if you fire like in like in college football too, you you fire these massive buyouts that you have for coaches. Like we're gonna fire the coach, but what what about the guy responsible for making the eleven consecutive like awful hiring decisions? Correct. Like they, they always manage to yes hang on to their job. General managers in NFL have long shelf lives. Uh, you know where it seems like coaches. I mean, how many how many coaches did Steve Kime hire in Arizona? <laughs> Like, it just seems to be that these GMs survive the coaching, even though they might hire a bad coach because they don't provide them with the tools necessary to help them win. And he, But the thing about Arthur Smith, though, is that he has some of the tools, doesn't use them, right? Bijan is basically a ghost on that right. team. Um, yeah, they have Kyle Pitts. They have Drake London. I mean, they have but weapons But he does there. so much more on the field yes, when, when he's course. not yes. seeing the ball. Yeah, exactly. That's why you um, take a guy yeah. overall to be a decoy. Yeah. Just something running back in the first round it makes it pretty simple. Uh, but I have Bijan Robinson under tickets, so I'll I'll gladly. You know, I told I think I told you this this year. I did a uh, every starting running back I could find their number. I took the under on. It's, it's going to be a little, very profitable for me. I think McCaffrey's going over for sure. Otherwise, I don't know who else right now is like for sure going over their rushing total for the season. I've got a look. I, I have a bunch of like middles that I that I went. Before the season, like yeah, the, the numbers vary w yeah. pretty wildly. I, I, I got to take a look and see how many of those maybe there's middle opportunities that that could potentially potentially hit yeah. receiving yards, passing yards. It's a lot of rushing, fun. To, rushing yards. It just I, I I was I was bored when they first came out, and I just happened to just I mean just go you, down. You don't, and, you don't have to you don't have to give a reason why you wager on something, buddy. We we all we all wager on these things. And so we're going to wager on, on games as we normally do. These are bets that Bear is making in real life. These are bets that he puts in his contest. These are bets he's given to you guys. We'll go over them right now. Then we'll get to gambling group chat. We'll do best bets with Survivor as well. We do it for the NFL week. So let's start with a game in the AFC South. It is the Tennessee Titans at Jacksonville. Jacksonville is a seven-point favorite. Total is 40. Tennessee is a three and six. They're four and five against the spread. Jacksonville six and three. After getting uh, dominated by the Niners in a game that I would never wager on, I can't. I mean, who would take Jacksonville? That would be dumb. Exactly. They've covered in six of their nine games. Home, dog, home dogs never do well. No, never do well. Uh, where are you going here, buddy? I am taking the dog here. This feels like a Vrabel special. I mean, the Titans were not good last week. Like I, I, I meant, we, we talked about this game at length last week as we were on opposite sides. And I am not a believer in Jacksonville. Yeah, they've got some divisional pressure on them now. With don't don't with Houston yeah. objects are a little. Closer than they appear in the rearview mirror. Um, again, I, I, I took the Titans plus the points here. The, the, Tennessee always feels like a team that, whenever you want to completely write them off, and they looked so bad the week before, like Vrabel somehow uglies a game up, and you're gonna you're gonna look up in the fourth quarter of this game, and it's gonna be like nineteen to thirteen. 
and Tennessee will have the ball and Ledbus will throw a pick and the Jaguars will hold on and win. <laughs> so I took the seven in Tennessee. Um, Vrabel is a dog is fantastic. He's he's the best underdog coach, right? Him and Tomlin and uh, that's him and Tomlin, yeah. right? The two best underdog so. coaches. I would think so. Um, this is the fate of Jacksonville. I, I don't think because I don't think there's much Tennessee love in this wager. It's more of just a Jacksonville fade, right? That Tennessee is a tough physical defense. Jacksonville, for whatever reason, offensively, most of their offensive line has not been able to block. They can't get anything down the field. So it's a kind of a dig and duck offense. Um, and Will, Will Levis, you know, he's been. Better than I think we thought. He, he yeah, has so, little, yeah, he's, he's shown some promise. His ability to get the ball down the field, which they need desperately because right. they haven't had that in years right. now. So uh, it's seven points a lot in the NFL, especially in division games when both teams are competent. When you have Giants commanders at nine and a half and one team is, I wouldn't take the commanders though, but one team is like not competent and I can understand the, the number being where it is. So let's get to the game in Green Bay now. The Chargers are four and five on the season. They just lost a close game to the Lions by three on Sunday. The Chargers are also... Four or five against the spread. The Packers are three and six on the season, but four or five against the spread. They are getting three points here. The total is 44. Bear, what you thinking? People are really going to lay points with, with the Chargers here. Like they're completely untrustworthy. Oh, I, I look. I told you about the Atlanta. They're on my no wager list. The Packers and 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 uh, and and New England are also so. I I so we got two don't two no wager teams here against each other for for you. Not the chart. No, it's Packers, Packers, Patriots. I just the Packers this year to me are like, I just I I have like gives me hives betting on the Packers. Well, I, I hopefully I will not walk into the studio next week with the with the case. But, of the but you can't bet the Chargers minus three on the road either. No, I, I, the, <laughs> world, the, both the best defense is terrible. Jordan Love actually played. I think probably his he's, best game he's of the getting, year. Jordan Love is getting last like last week incrementally better. Like each week. The, the missed PAT cost them at least a chance at overtime. Maybe yeah, potentially winning that game. Like God, the, the Chargers are gross this every, year. Every it feels like every week the, the 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 Packers are in a close game as well. You can't trust can't trust the Chargers here. I took Green Bay plus the three. Yeah, I, the Chargers are just like what are the Chargers this year? They're so it's a weird team, man. I just I want someone else to coach Justin Herbert. As a Justin Herbert fan, I saw someone tweet out uh, like early like like the the Chargers like all time record is like. Exactly five hundred. That would not which, which is perfect. It's I want, I want, I want Ben Johnson from the Lions to coach Herbert. I want Harbaugh to coach Herbert. I want someone that has an offensive background to coach Justin Herbert and turn this team. The Chargers, and are I want, I want it to be healthy too. His hand, his, sure. his other hand's not. But the Chargers have so many good football players, mm -hmm. and they play the Chargers each week, which is so like a fantasy team. Yeah, just a bunch of good There's, players. Yeah, just can't get any wins. All right. Let's get to your final game right now. A game I love this game. It's going to be all in my contest this week as well. Cardinals at the Texans. Texans are favored by five. Totals 49 in this game. Cardinals are two and eight. They won their first game in a month. Quarterback Kyler Murray was back. So I think you kind of throw out the previous rest of the season for them. Doesn't matter. Texans, four and five. Currently a playoff team. They're also five and two. They're five and four. Currently a playoff They're five and four against the spread as well. I took Arizona plus the five. I'm yes. hoping that maybe all of the CJ Stroud, MVP, D'Amico Ryan's coach of the year, uh, maybe make the playoffs. I'm hoping all this like drives this number up and people get really excited about it. But like, I would be like super worried about laying points here with, with, with the Texas Cardinals. They've been playing love this. played well most of the year. Uh, Tyler Murray looked good last week. I mean, it could, it could flip on it on a dime at a moment's notice, but this, ha this has to be Cardinals or pass. What do you think the look headline was on this? I guess it's kind of tough because Murray hasn't played this Ooh, season. Like the look, the look at before the year. Well, before the year, this is probably a pickup. I'd imagine, right? Close. Maybe Cardinals favored by a couple points. Yeah. I'd say probably Cardinals like one. Yeah. One or two. I, 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 I'm a big proponent in the NFL. We've seen a lot this season of fading the hot team. That's not the Chiefs, right? Or like not the Eagles. Is like the, the Texans, remember, just lost the Panthers a couple weeks ago. They're not a team that is unbeatable. And the Cardinals with Kyler Murray are better. They looked better last week. Murray was able to, to lead them back for that comeback. Um, they have some juice with Kyler Murray there. And the Texans are rightfully getting all the attention they deserve for their season so far. But this is an absolute week to fade them. 
You have to do it. You have to fade the Texans. It's not an anti-Texans take. I like them. I like watching J.J. Stroud. But in the NFL, if you're a young, up-and-coming team as the Texans are, you're getting all this national attention. You just have to auto-fade them, man. You they have to do it. did lose to the Panthers a couple weeks yes, ago. Yes, right? 13-12. Yes, they're not a team that— In the game you are at. Okay, yes, I go to all the Panthers home games. Big, big Panthers fan. Uh, let's get to the recap of these picks before we get to gambling group chat and our best bets in our Survivor. We're still alive in Survivor. Some of us are. Uh, you have the Titans plus seven at Jacksonville. You have the Packers hosting the Chargers at plus three. And you have the Cardinals on the road getting five points against the Texans. Next up, our favorite of the week, the gambling group chat. We talk all things NFL, little, little, little coach of the year odds, where are we handling some of the futures right now? The teams we like this week, we handle it all. It's Bear, Will Hill, Sammy P, and myself. Here's Gambling Group Chat. Gambling Group Chat is back. Myself, Sammy P, Will Hill, Jeff right here next to me. I, I guess I'll start with the, the biggest story, at least in terms of an injury on the field this week. Deshaun Watson now out for the year, and they're going to go with DTR against the Steelers who continue to win games. Line open to four and a half. Now with the injury move, uh, it's down to pick in a lot of spots. I'll have some, some thoughts on this later in the show. But, uh, Jeff, what, 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 what do we think here? About the game? I would never take the Steelers as a road favorite. I'll tell you that. Well, uh, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not laying it's, points, it's, at least. It's, it's a pick em. It's moving now. It's a pick em. Um But, uh, I, look... The Steelers Total's just, 33. The, the Steelers, I know, it's ridiculous. It's very funny. The Steelers just can't keep doing this, right, guys? Like, they can't keep getting outgained and winning football games. And, and some of these times they're getting outgained because teams are behind and trying to come back, which is what happened last weekend. But nonetheless, I mean, the Steelers' defense is good, not great, right? We know Watt's good. Now, I think the question with the Browns, too, is if you're out your quarterback and both your tackles still, and we know your left tackle's out, I don't know about the right tackle, like, that's a problem for me still right um so i don't really have a, a play on this game guys but i don't know how the Steelers can keep doing this is my thought right like if the browns are able to move the ball at all in this game and the Steelers will, will not be able to move the ball as we've seen throughout the season against the browns team it's hard to move the football so i would probably lean browns but don't feel great about it yeah it's like the line from breaking bad what's it jesse he can't keep getting away with this i mean that's what you feel like when you're betting against <laughs> pittsburgh last week it's a missed extra point it's a it, that was a forward pass too that should have been a touchdown i think sometimes when it's in the one o'clock window and there's a million games on a call like that gets lost where if it happens in prime time people will be screaming bloody murder um if you can get the one and a half either way it's a great teaser leg with a total of 33 and a half i think it's moved too much uh i, I always look sunday night at the local headlines this was actually six and then it's down to four it's like oh, maybe watson with the ankle is not going to play and boy, just a, uh, it's such a blow for the Browns because you come off such an emotional, that's a crazy when you're down 14 in the fourth to win the game like that, even after a missed extra point, And now your season is basically over three or four days later. Um, I don't know. I, I think the Browns have the better team. I just think you, you say the DTR, Hey, don't lose the game. We'll run it. We'll do play action. We'll punt if we have to, and we'll win the game with our defense. Uh, I think the Browns win this game. I think this is a little bit of an overreaction. It's not like Watson was playing great before this. It was a good second half last week, but uh, to me, the Browns at home can get this done. They like the kid, too. I mean, DTR was pretty solid in the preseason. The reason that we didn't see him the last time Lamar got hurt is because it was a last-minute thing on a Friday. That's why they ended up starting P.J. Walker. I think that was against Baltimore. But with the full week to prepare, I think that he's going to minimize the risk for DTR. Um, let me let me say this. I think a lot of people want to know how we think sometimes. Maybe not everybody, but we're on this stupid phone more than we could admit, all of us. And if you don't have <laughs> underdog NFL notifications on your phone, you're, you're clearly costing yourself at least some good prices. Like I get all those notifications on my phone. And when the buzz came through on Deshaun Watson, it came right to the phone. And as sick as I am and as sick as we are, the first thing I did was when I saw Watson out, bet the under. Because you know it's going to run immediately, and you know it's going to continue to run for the rest of the week. So this going forward, when you see anything yeah. like seriously injury-related going forward with the NFL or college, and you see that a quarterback is out, you can literally grab the best available under. I got a 36. Now, I don't want to pass post on this program and say, like, oh, I'm the greatest better ever. But look at the number now, guys. It's 33. There's a 32 offshore. It might get lower. So when you see Deshaun Watson out for the year and you get the notification on your phone, you can literally get a number that beats the market by three or four points because by the time you see it on the ticker on TV or you hear it on a radio sports update, the line has already moved. 
like people looking for breaking news on the bottom of the screen. That's not really breaking news. The news breaks instantaneously and the line has to move accordingly. And this line went from 36 to 33 over the course of a day. And it still isn't done. It's still not done going down. To follow up on Sammy's point, it's it's such a good point because they move like I think you know most betters think all right Watson's out about a bit against the Browns. They're pretty quick to move that number. Sometimes it's the secondary numbers that there's little angles, uh, the derivatives like all right, what's the team total? What's the division price? Is there a future angle where you know the the main number gets quick to move, but there's some ripple effects like we saw the Ravens. That, that was my first thought. All right, what what are the Ravens here to win the division? They were even money now minus one fifteen. Like there's different angles to play it when, when you get that news. So it's it, it's such a good point. You you were talking about the, the the Browns before. Like I'm holding Browns over nine and a half season wins, and I don't necessarily feel awful. Like I need to get off of that. At first, I was like, oh crap, I got I, I got to get off this now. Like the totals ten and a half. Do I play under ten and a half just to get off? But I'm I'm looking at this. If you can beat Pittsburgh, the Bears, and the Jets at home, and you should be able to beat Pittsburgh. The Bears and the Jets with those three offenses coming in with your defense, that gets you to nine. And you've got road games against Denver, the Rams, and the Texans. Like you should be able to win one of those three games. Like it feels like 10 is a pretty good landing spot. So I might be talking myself actually into playing a little under 10 and a half and maybe trying to get a nice fat middle on the uh the over nine and a half under. Under ten and a half here, and, and, and as, as I look at this, because yeah, I, I I still think the Browns to make the playoffs might be live because you're going to have to get to ten in the AFC, and it looks like ten is, is a uh, a very realistic spot for the uh, for, for the for the Browns here. And I mentioned one of the other teams, Houston, uh, on they they play play them on the road Christmas Eve. Everyone's favorite team, I think, in the league right now is Houston. CJ Stroud is going to be the MVP and the Rook Offensive Rookie of the Year. D'Amico Ryan's is going to be Coach of the Year. The the Texans are going to make the playoffs, maybe even win that division. Now, I I pump, I'm pumping the brakes on that this week. Um, I actually am against the, uh, the the Texans this week. I Good. took I took the points with the with, with with your guy Kyler, who had an unbelievable game in, in his in his first game back last week. So I I like the, the the Cardinals plus the points. Am, am, am I crazy, Sammy, for liking the Cardinals? Are, are Texans a little too overvalued here? No, not at all. I, I think the move earlier in the week told a real story. You know, this thing got blasted from five and a half down to four. And I, I stand by what I said last week. And I know I got torched in the comments on social when uh, our team right. clipped the I know you're going the thing of me saying that they should not play Kyler Murray and. You know, after the game, it's like, oh, yeah, that's why you play the game, you dork. And I'm like, all right, like, I get it. But now you're not going to pick. Here's the point going way over your head. (laughs) Yeah, it it just okay, cool. Like Kyler Murray wins a couple games and now you're picking sixth overall. Congratulations. Like you could have had a generational quarterback or you could have taken a superstar wide receiver and Marvin Harrison to pair with Kyler Murray or a left tackle of the future for Kyler Murray. But no, you want to win a meaningless game and finish with four wins instead of two wins. If that's how you want to play it, that's fine. It's still stupid. It's stupid as hell that you're trying to win games when you're so close to picking first or second overall. And I stand by that. Uh, As for the game, this total is on the move, 47 to 49. But I, I will probably, you know, I like this week a lot more than I like last week. And we all pick these contest plays and all that. Arizona plus five will be in my contest for sure. You have to fade the hype here. CJ Straw for MVP, D'Amico coach of the year. All that stuff makes this just a little less attainable. And how about this? Houston's been outstanding as a dog. Only one non-cover as a dog. Houston as a favorite this year, 0-3 ATS. Yeah, just a friendly reminder, to everybody, this great Houston team did lose to the Panthers a couple weeks ago. So life, life comes at you fast in the NFL. <laughs> Do you remember after week five, um, the discussion was Brock Purdy for MVP, right? Brock Purdy's the MVP, best mm-hmm. player in all of the football. And then the, the Niners went to the Browns and lost. Two weeks ago was Jared Goff, MVP. Is, is the Lions the one seed, which might still happen, by the way. Uh, and they went to, to Baltimore and lost 37 to three. Now we're doing CJ Stroud, MVP. MVP, guys. He played a, a good month. MVP of the NFL. Oh my God, the best quarterback in all of the NFL, right? The MVP of the NFL. They're going to lose this weekend. This is what happens in the NFL all the time, right? Instead of just saying, like, 
CJ Stroud, you're doing a great job. He's doing a fantastic job. D'Amico Ryans, bravo, man. You're doing a great job this year. You guys are exceeding expectations. Stroud is clearly the quarterback of the future in Houston. No, no, no. We have to attach MVP, coach of the year to all this stuff. And in the NFL, it's the best sport of humbling you. The second the start, the, you know, the, the talk starts coming out, as much as the players and coaches say, I don't hear it. I don't listen to Twitter. I don't listen to the TV. I've been in the facility. The TV, we have a TV right here. It's on. It would be on ESPN. It's on NFL Network. They see all this stuff. They're going to lose this weekend. And I'm very happy to get Arizona plus five. That was very impassioned. I, I, I'm, I'm, I feel very confident now that. That you're uh, you're you're as animated and passionate. Well, I just I just think and, and we, why, why do we do this? Like, why can't we just give uh, someone props without going to the fact of saying they're the MVP? Like that was the immediate discussion on Monday. It was MVP CJ Stroud? Guys, like, who, take a deep breath. To Will's point, they lost 13-12 to the Panthers two weeks ago, right? Will that was two weeks ago now, three weeks ago now. Like, like they they, they just had a bad game three weeks ago. Now they're the MVP. Like, just take a deep breath, everyone. And you mentioned he's not the winning the MVP. He's not. It's not happening. Of he's not. Twenty five to one. I mean, the books are literally telling you when you look at the market and you see him twenty five <laughs> to one, despite as good as he's played and he's been awesome, he's still twenty five to one. Like they are literally telling you, hey, come on down and bet it. We'll give you twenty five to one because it's not going to happen. But here's the. How about this, Bear? CJ Stroud minus two thousand to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. That is a, <laughs> that is done. Yeah, and, and, and people would like scoff at like ever doing this, but like if you can find a place to take a hell of a lot of money, like isn't it just like a where we're, we're November? Where it's like a it's a two month mutual yeah. fund, isn't it? But what if he gets hurt? That's a good question. I if he got hurt this right point, this second, what would happen? I still think he wins it. Yeah. Who, who are you? I mean, Naku has done nothing lately. Uh, Bijan's nothing. But if you miss, I mean, this is we still have half the season left. If you miss, if you miss half right. the season, not half the season, we have you know seven weeks left. If you miss seven weeks, they still going to give you the, the rookie of the year award. I just don't. I mean, I just don't know who. I mean, Devon well, Chain's missed well, a bunch Frank of Reich time is, as well. Frank Reich's calling plays again in Carolina, so you know. Oh, we, we, we still along with Thomas Brown. No, it's back to Frank Reich. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that was. By by the way, like he's probably hoping he got, gets fired. I, I would think you got no picks. Your your quarterback that you didn't want is the quarterback you didn't want is your quarterback, and the quarterback you wanted is going to win Rookie of the Year. Like I, I, he probably goes to sleep every night, just begging, like maybe just fire me, pay me out, get me out of here. I, I just can't deal with this. But you mentioned you mentioned golf, and you mentioned the Lions. We talked Ryan's Coach of the Year. Like that is, that's the one market out there that right now I do think is still bettable. Like, like I, I think, I mean, you hate to hold it against Dan Campbell that the Lions are good, and. He's favored to win coach of the year. And you, you don't want to say, oh, he, the Lions were supposed to be good. He shouldn't win because he has a good team. But it, at some point, though, don't you have to – that that award to me always goes to, like, the team or the coach that they kind of overachieve the most. Like, Ryan's would be that guy, I think, if they get into the playoffs. But I, I think Kevin O'Connell right now would be the bet for me. I think he's around plus 750 or so, maybe a little bit, a little bit longer. Because if they – in the NFC, they, there's a really good chance they're going to wind up in the playoffs. And like, if they make the playoffs after losing Cousins and, and losing Jefferson, like, how does he not win Coach of the Year? Because Dan Campbell is liked by everyone, they're going to be the one seed possibly. Like, that's how it works. I mean, I don't. I, I think Dan Campbell, if the Lions get the one seed, he's absolutely winning this award. There's, I don't think there's any any question about it. I mean, he he's a guy that everyone likes. They root for right. He's a guy that that has. Take the, this is the Detroit Lions. I was in the Lions in 2016. I was in the preseason there. We got booed on the first drive of the preseason for having a three and out. Like, th like that's that's the Lions history, right? Like, I remember I turned to someone who had been there a while. I was like, is this really happening? They said, yes, we just got booed. There could be the one seed, man, with the Niners and, and Eagles behind them. I think there's no chance he loses this award if he's the one seed. Now, if they don't get to the one seed, that's another debate. Even the two, maybe he wins the award. But uh, to me, I mean, Kevin O'Connell has to – you got to keep winning, first of all, which I think they might. But I think it's Dan Campbell or Bust right now, guys. I don't I don't know how, else, how, how you guys feel about it. 
if Mike Tomlin gets the Steelers to the playoffs, getting outgained, outscored, out everything, he's never <laughs> won this award. He's never gotten top five. He's almost, he's kind of the star of the team, sort of like Dable was the star of the team last year. And the, you couldn't hear about the Giants without hearing about Dable within a first sentence or two. It's the same thing with Steelers. You, you hear about the Steelers, and, and the first thing people say is Tomlin. If he gets the 10 wins, he gets in the playoffs, he's going to be very live to win this award. Double digit odds, that's still the best bet for me. You said too, didn't you say last week to bet him at 22 to one? And now you pull up the apps and he's 10 to one. This is the point about markets like this. They are so overreactionary and so volatile. I mean, you could have bet Kevin O'Connell, Mike Tomlin, and D'Amico Ryans at 16 to one or higher in the last month. Now, you don't want to just gobble up, you know, coach of the year bets and just put them all in your pocket. But this thing is going to change and turn and continue to flip. I mean, look, if Mike McDaniel rattles off three wins and the the Dolphins are suddenly, you know, a lock to win the AFC East, he goes from seven to one back to four to one. If Dan Campbell loses a game the Lions shouldn't lose, he goes from 150 to, you know, 275. It's just it's going to continue to turn. Any any of these guys could win it. There are five or six coaches that could win it. And remember, we still have like a whole bunch of the season left. Like a lot of things could continue to go right or wrong for all of these coaches. You know who I was thinking about that wasn't yeah, even listed because what... Dable's listed 500 to one. Belichick's 500 to one. I'm willing to uh, take those bets if anyone wants to DM me. Antonio Pierce wasn't listed. <laughs> where he never got them in the playoffs. You know, the media likes him. He, he He's a good story. Nobody likes McDaniels. I, I'm surprised he wasn't at least listed. I'm not advocating a bet for him. I was just scanning the odds out of curiosity. I was I was surprised he wasn't listed. Did you know the five quarterbacks the Raiders have been this season? Can I can I can I, give, can I give you guys a list of the right five quarterbacks? Russell Wilson, Zach Wilson, Mac Jones, Jordan Love, Tommy DeVito. Yeah, the Raiders are not making the playoffs. I just want to make oh, that no. clear. No, I, I, oh no, oh no, I, 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 I just, very, uh, okay. Yeah. No, I, I, wasn't I hope they don't win a game. Board. I was just surprised. <laughs> yeah, me too, Bear. They, they can win seven games. They can win seven games. Just don't win eight. I, that might that might be a, a hint as to firing a, a Vegas under seven and a half season season, season win total. No one will, no one will post a Giants win total. No, it's up. It's three Where and a half. It is, it's, actually, it's, I'm three, right now. It's, it's three. It's three and a half. Oh, oh. Well, they're at two right now, right? Correct. They're yes. not winning two games, are, are they? <laughs> we hope not. We certainly <laughs> hope not. Yeah, we'll, 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 we we're, we're worried about the, that that Cardinal under now, aren't we? Yes. We are. How, how, how do you? How how do you? I was gonna say, how do you play? How are you playing that now, especially with Kyler back? And clearly, there looks like to there to Sammy's point, trying to win games for some reason. I get, I, I get the coach wanting to get what I, I get Gannon wanting to see what he has, but wow, you, you, you're it's kind of malpractice to just kind of just give up maybe an opportunity to get a number one or a number two pick. No one's ever accused Arizona yeah. of being well run, right? So, like, this is not a surprise. I mean, their owners is in, what, two lawsuits right now over his handling of, or at least one, right? Uh, maybe the second one. There's articles that come out every three months about how, ter- how terrible the, the Cardinals are run, like, and the internal strife and, and disorganization there. Like, there's no surprise. I mean, Sammy, your, your point is exactly correct. You had a chance to just let Kyler Murray hang out, earn his paycheck, rehab, be in the building, and get yourself a generational talent. Or, by the way, if you decide that Kyler Murray is your guy for next season, you could have you trade the picks pick, you get yeah. for Caleb Williams or Drake May and rebuild your entire roster with all those picks. Instead, you're choosing to win games that don't mean anything for the future. This means nothing this season, right? It, nothing happens this year. It means anything for the future other than now you do not have that possibility to trade, you know, for seven draft picks or draft yourself a quarterback. And organizations that do not look forward like this are the ones that continue to struggle each and every year because they end up just being mediocre. You have to look forward, and the Cardinals are not looking forward right now. It's going to cost themselves an opportunity to uh, to really rebuild their roster this offseason. You look at uh, some other games last week, Jeff. I, a couple weeks ago, I beat, beat Will in, in the uh, the college pod with my oh, best bet come last on. week. I late, late, late. Late, late, laid one down on you. You had the Jaguars. What happened last week? I don't. I think the Niners. I didn't just, watch that game. The Niners happened? just scored again. I'm <laughs> fade. I, I'm fading Jacksonville again this week. I'm not there with this team. I'm not laying seven with with, with the tight with, with the, uh, the Jaguars. I took the seven with, 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 with Tennessee. I think this is a vintage Rabel spot. They were terrible last week. Uh, awesome decision by by Vrabel to kick that field goal. Um, to, to, to make it what 17 six, we, we just a, a wonderful decision. He made like I didn't get that at all, 
But here, getting getting the full seven against the Jaguar team that I am not fully sold on. I like the Titans. Anybody else have a, a thought on this game? Jags are teasable to me. Like you, you kind of have to bounce back here. And, you know, we talk about this all the time. If you can just forget what you saw last week, you'll do pretty well. Like the Jags, the, the truth is somewhere in between. I don't know if they're a legit contender. Um, that felt, man, I, it felt they feel a little paper tiger ish. Um, and, and I don't know that Lawrence, who's billed as this great quarterback, like, he's an okay quarterback. He's fine, but I don't know that he's ever going to be what he's supposed to be, like the p- next Peyton Manning, the next whoever. Um, but to me, Jags bounce back. They probably win this game. Like you said, I'm not laying seven. Perfect teaser spot. You pair him with, you know, whoever's getting a points in, in Cleveland, Pittsburgh. You tease him with Minnesota up to eight and a half, but uh, it would be Jags or nothing. But Jags and the teaser is the better way to go. I'm just not laying the seven. Big one, obviously, Monday night, the Kelsey Bowl rematch with the Super Bowl. Chiefs minus two and a half. But I, I love the fact both of these teams are, are off of the bye. Um, feels like the, the the Eagles are kind of the the, the sexy underdog pick in this, in this game that I would be a little bit worried about. Uh, so much talk about how the Chiefs were kind of fortunate to win that game. Uh, last year, oh, yeah, you, you, you Jeff, you know, you know, Randy's record off of off of the bye, and one you know? and three, some yeah. insane number like that. I just make it a habit of almost blindly taking Mahomes anytime he's under three points as a favorite. Like, or he's rarely a dog, so it's really a conversation to have. Like, he just wins and covers these games at an abnormal rate. Like, I don't know how you just don't if you don't have a f- great feel for it. I just take Mahomes as a slight favorite, and that seems to to work out well. Guys, the Chiefs' defense is really good. Like, they're really good. They're going to play well in this game again because they played well all season. And, yeah, the tush push is a thing, whatever. You you don't get fourth and one. You don't worry about it, right? Um, and I think the Eagles were like, were like, you know, eight for eight in the Super Bowl on it. But more importantly, the Chiefs' offense is going to figure itself out. Like, it's going to figure it out. And the Eagles are slightly worse on offense this year and slightly worse on defense. They're not, they're not the same team they were last year. The Chiefs, arguably, are much better on defense, falling back on offense. But we trust Patrick Mahomes, right, to figure this thing out. So, uh, I, to me, if Mahomes is anything under three, I'm taking Mahomes and, and the Chiefs here. How about uh, more Chiefs stock? Anybody want more Chiefs Super Bowl stock at 5-1? to one? They win this game. Love some. All the 5 to ones go away. I mean, look. This team is going to be likely the one again in the AFC, 13 and four, 14 and three. The AFC will again go through Arrowhead for like the fifth or sixth year in a row. And then when you have Chiefs five to one in your back pocket, you could bet off it. You could bet other teams in the AFC. You could bet a team in the NFC. Like you don't need to just make it's so funny. Like everybody wants to know, and we all do it. We all do this content stuff. Everybody wants to know going into the Super Bowl. Who do you like in the Super Bowl? What's your favorite bet? And it's always a coin flip game that could go either way. Why don't we just take a little Kansas City right now at five to one and have that in our pocket going into the playoffs? It was six to one before the season. Okay, you lost a dollar of value, but who would you rather bet right now? You get the best quarterback on the planet at five to one that's likely going to be the one seed again. What are you waiting for? Just do it. I have done it, and yeah, I probably will do it again. Like, 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 like I, 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 and that's what, kind of what we were talking about, Sam, a couple of weeks ago when it was time to buy some 49ers stock as well before the game last week. When, oh, they lost three in a row. The sky's yeah. falling. Pur- Purdy, they need to get Trey Lance back and bench Purdy. His deal with the devil is up, and, and all these things. Like, pump the brakes. The, 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 the Niners still might be a good team. Just, just, just they, they kind of reminded everybody of that last also week. Also, a note on Kansas City in in the postseason: if they host the the as as our colleague here, Nick Wright calls the Arrowhead Invitational for the sixth straight season, as, as it currently sits right now, which playoff team in the AFC are the Chiefs going to be even concerned about playing? Because the Bengals right now are not in the playoffs, the Bills are not in the playoffs. Like, which team is coming to Arrowhead? And you're like, man, I'm worried the Chiefs aren't going to win this game. Baltimore, I was who, who, they, who they played well in the playoffs against. Yeah. Um, are, are you worried about the Jaguars coming no. to town? Are you worried about the Dolphins no. coming to town? Like, with, so I, mean, I think to Sammy's point, to our point, like it feels like a good spot to take the Chiefs right now, looking at the rest of the – now, the Bengals are the one that I'm always worried about. But if they don't win uh, the game against, you know, the Ravens, and, I mean, they're not – they might not be in the playoffs. You know who I would be worried about? Who? I'd be worried about the Browns just because of that defense. And now the Chiefs' offense has kind of been up and down. Still haven't really clicked in yet. 
I think that Browns defense is, I mean, we saw a couple of years. I think that Browns defense is good enough potentially to give them problems. Now, we don't trust the Browns probably to score enough points to win that game, but that would be a very uncomfortable game, I think, if I were a Chiefs fan. I'm going to feel pretty good. It sounds like wishful thinking, somebody with a Browns ticket. If, if, yes. Yeah. I would say if, if, <laughs> if Dorian Thompson Robinson shows up to Arrowhead on you'll, you'll, January 30th, you'll, 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 you'll drive him to the stadium. January 30th, I, as a Chiefs fan, I will be uh, not concerned about the results of that football game. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. It fits right yeah, in. I though, do have, I, I mean, do. Think about all the Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. You got Mahomes, Brady, Stafford, Mahomes, and DTR. Perfect. <laughs> exactly. In the, in the great creation, the, the UCLA quarterback lineage of Super Bowl winning quarterback, Troy Aikman to DTR, right? Exactly. Yes. I do have some very nice Browns tickets that I was a little disappointed about this way. I, I got like a like a 45 to one. I got like 23 Ooh. to one to win the AFC. Yeah. yeah. That, that, was, that was that was a tough one, but maybe a little bit of wishful thinking. But I do I do think that Browns defense could potentially make make that game not super, super easy yeah. uh, for them. And you mentioned Buffalo not in the playoffs, like debacle again. Like we talked about a few weeks ago, how uh, uh, the Bills to miss the playoffs might be worth yeah, a bet, I took it. and that look it's looking like like it's in play. And that being said, I think they want have the the Jets and the Raiders maybe the next two weeks. Is is, is that who they have? Before no, the schedule Jets, really picks up. No, they have. The, it's, because, it's the I, Jets, coming then, up and at that. Chiefs, at Eagles, at Chiefs, at Eagles, Cowboys. They still have at Dolphins. They still have the Chargers. Their schedule after this week, they better win this week. After this, it's brutal. And look, you're going to need to get to 10 in the AFC. They're 5-5, five and five, so you're going to have to go 5-2 and two, uh, at Chiefs, at Eagles, Chargers, at Dolphins. And good luck getting a 5-2. and two. Uh, The defense is a mess. McDermott, they're probably going to have a new coach in a couple of months. I would have had a new coach after that game in, uh, against Kansas City a couple years ago in the playoffs. That 13 seconds was just absolutely ridiculous. Coaching now practice. So it seems like they missed their window. They're going to have to recalibrate, get a new coach, maybe get the Lions offensive coordinator, and just kind of start over You know, this summer, next fall. The the Bills, what's wrong with the Bills is that their drafts have not been very fruitful. I mean, you can, I can look at the list right now. I mean, Kincaid obviously seems like a good player. Osiris Torrance is a rookie offensive lineman. Elam, Cook, who, I mean, running back, okay. Bernard's playing a lot for them. Shakir, uh, Rousseau's okay. Uh, like, wh where are the uh, Epinesa, Zach Mott? Like, where are, the, where are the game changing players they have drafted? the last four or five drafts. The answer is very little of those players, right? Like, and that's the problem. They're not a talented football team. Josh Allen sort of pieces that over, but then when Josh Allen doesn't play up to really his standards he had three or four years ago, the turnover machine that he is, he's the most interceptions, I believe, since entering the NFL, right? I mean, he just turns the ball over way too much. Then you end up having a situation where you can't beat teams because you, you can't make it up and then we're also around your roster and firing Ken Dorsey does nothing that the bills offense is not the problem right now. And so um, they're just a bad, it's a bad roster sort of pieced together by Josh Allen. And when he's not Superman, the rest of the poor roster shows up. So you're right. I mean, McDermott's probably out of there though. I would imagine they're going to hire an offensive coach and, and try to sort of fix what's wrong with the offense, but they need better drafts. They're not, they're not drafting impactful players. Would you lay the seven this week against the jets? No. They already lost the Jets. I'm not like I'm, I'm not touching. I'm that aware. Game. I, I watched the game. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, the, the the Jets are feisty enough, and Buffalo are just untrustworthy to me. So I, I would not. I would stay away from that game. Many other options. What either of you guys will Sammy lay, lay seven with the Bills here in the in the in the must win it is who, who who is it? It's it's, uh, it's Doctor Bob, isn't it? Will who uh, who says if you're in a must win a must win game, you must not be very good. It's a, it's a good line. I feel like this is actually a good buy low spot for the Bills. The only thing that would keep me off of it. Allen has struggled with those solid defenses for whatever reason. I mean, go back to opening night in, in past years, they've given him fits, but it would be bills or nothing. I just don't know that the jets can keep up offensively. I'll probably do it again. I did it last week, like a fool I laid seven against oh. Denver <laughs> four turnovers. And they still yeah. like have a chance to, to push that though. You know, like that's the, that's the maddening part about Buffalo. They had four turnovers and in the fourth quarter, they got the ball in a tie game. And they could still, you could still push the seven. That's why it's so frustrating. I am not on Buffalo, but I am betting the Rams uh, off a of buy. Took the Rams plus one and a half. You could take a one right now. Stafford healthier, probably going to give it a go. Cooper Cup healthier. Offensive line getting healthier. McVay off a of buy. Not a bad bet ever. And uh, this Chicago Detroit over is is still speaking to me at forty eight. 
Guys, Justin Fields is one of the best over quarterbacks we've seen in the last two years. He's about 68% to the over. Bears were one of the best over teams in the league last year. He put Fields back under center this weekend. This number opened 45, 45 and a half. It got hit, but I, I still think Detroit's going to score in the 30s. And we know with Fields, they can move the ball. But really, Chicago's defense blows. It is so bad. They have so many issues in the secondary. They can't, Jeff, they can't contain at the line of scrimmage. Uh, and Detroit, as we know, is is good enough to run it up. I, I think even at 47 and a half, 48, I would play that over in Chicago, Detroit. There's going to be a lot of points in Detroit. Is it, right, right now, the, the Bears obviously what, holding that number one pick because of that trade with Arizona. Oh, so, the Panthers. And, and, and what? The Panthers. Yeah, trade with, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. We, we were talking, we're, we're killing Arizona for, uh, the way they play. So yeah. right now, Bears two picks in the top five. So we, we could see a little uh, organizational turnaround here in the uh, in in the future. What, 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 what any other any other games out there? Uh, Will anything out there that we have not hit yet that you want to uh, sneak in? I mean, it's getting away from you a little bit. It's up to 13 and a half, but we've seen this movie with Miami before where they just beat up on these bad teams. There's a couple of these front runners in the league, Miami, the Cowboys, where it's hard to make the line high enough. Like Bill, like Cowboys Giants last week, he couldn't make that line high enough. It's uh, it's almost call it the bartender special, whatever, but you're going to look up at this game. It's going to be 14 up in Miami. It's probably going to be 38, 13 or something. I don't, I don't know that the Raiders can keep up. You get Miami off of a buy off of a loss. The Raiders kind of fat and happy. So uh, at 14, I'd lay off, but under anything under 14, which is at right now, I, I would lay it here with Miami. Speaking about the, that same sort of philosophy, you're taking the Cowboys on the road in Carolina, minus 14 and a half. I will say this will be a Cowboys home game. I, I live in Charlotte. A lot of Cowboys fans. Are you going? going to be, uh, going no, to I'm still not going to the game. No, still not going. Um, are, are you laying with the Cowboys too? Because your, your exact point is the same thing with the Cowboys. They've been every bad football team they played outside of Arizona by a lot of points this year. The Panthers, we mentioned earlier, switching play callers again back to Frank Wright. I mean, they're a dumpster fire right now. I, 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 I'm not laying the Cowboys in the situation. I don't know if I trust them on the road in this spot, but is the same philosophy apply here for them? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to do this too much where I'm laying double digits, especially on the road. So one a week I can do. I did the Cowboys last week. I'm going to stay away from the Cowboys. The hook bothers me a little bit, but uh, I do think Miami's one that pulls away. You know, there, there was one other. Um game that I think we maybe should mention just because two teams that have completely turned their seasons around. I mentioned O'Connell and the Vikings. Uh, O'Connell maybe is a coach of their candidate. Denver, the team that actually did win that game on, on Monday night, courtesy of the, the, the Bills uh, you know, melt meltdown with too many men on the field and the turnovers. So bad. You want to lay two and a half, though, with the Broncos now at, at home. I mean, Russell Wilson, set people, everyone looking for an apology now, being that he's what, second in the league in touchdown passes. That Minnesota defense is pretty darn good, though, and I, I know they had some injuries this, this this week. But Dobbs is playing well. Still, though, they they feel I don't know if I fully want to get involved in this game. I mean, it would be Vikings or pass for me, but the, they feel kind of little like underdog with fleas in this game. I I, I think don't, don't you think, uh, Sammy? Vikings might be a little little trendy. I'd rather I'd rather drink bleach than bet that game. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 uh, let's save some time right there. Will, Will, Will do you want to join? Uh, did you want to want, want to join me with the Vikings, or do you want to sa- join Sammy at the bar with a little uh, shot of Clorox? Uh, how about the under 44, 43 and a half Denver sort of morphed into an under team. They take the ball out of Wilson's hands. They give it to Javante Williams. The defense has played a little better. I know last week was turnover prone um, in terms of like, you know, they didn't really stop Buffalo. Buffalo had over seven yards per play, but if you blitz Wilson, you can get him in trouble. Flores is going to blitz. So uh, to me, this has got like a typical, you know, 23, 20, uh, 2023 game where it's a prime time under, I know we like the over in the Thursday night game. We'll see how that goes, but uh, to me, this is an under game. I, I didn't. Th- I didn't figure he's a trend guy. Will going right back to the prime time under, just, 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 just like a sucker. No, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's a lock. The reason why the prime time unders is a thing is because if you see the quarterbacks who are playing yes. in prime time the I last understand. four weeks of the season, like it's, it's it, the quarterbacks no. suck. It's so bad. Sunday night was it's not was, why it was the it's a clear it the long, the, uh, esta- long established scientific O'Connell Wilson Sunday night that was oh, a, I, a yeah that was I, a, I, 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 it's the sad thing is as a Jets fan 
I actually, I went to bed in the third quarter. So did I. I was I, dead I, asleep. I could, I could not do it anymore. Monday I, night, I fell asleep. I was out. I'm not watching these bad quarters. I, I, I think I think a lot of that had to do with the result in, in Dallas where somehow I got sucked into an in-game oh. under, and that did not that did not. I can go sum well up the Jets no, game no, for you, that. Bear. I, I can sum yes, it up fuck. because Dallas said after the game, he said Zach Wilson's been playing very well, so he's not going to bench him. He's been playing very well. So that's the summary. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, it's amazing. Like, he can't honestly believe this. Like, it, it's it, Jeff, you, you, it, no. he's got to say this publicly. He does. But he knows that his quarterback stinks. It's not, it's not good. I, I think that it's funny how Joe Douglas gets no heat really sometimes for what, what they did here, but not having a backup quarterback. Uh, any sort of valuable option. And then also when you see Josh Jobs get traded at the deadline. From the Browns, he got traded. And, by the way, he was, he was the well, Browns, Browns before the year. then Cardinals. But even when you see him get traded to the Vikings and come out and win his first two games, and the idea of just, Such a good point. we're going to trust Zach Wilson with Nate Hackett, who we see Nate Hackett. Again, I think with Nate Hackett, now they might have been good with, with Aaron Rodgers this year, but he has never been good as an OC. His best year was 2017 with Bortles, and I think it was 2017, right? With Bortles, 2018 with Bortles. And they were like 15th. Bortle service. And they were like 15th, like in Jacksonville, like in total offense. Like it wasn't like a good season. So the idea that just roll with Zach Wilson, and again, the team it has winning pieces there. And it's not acceptable for them just to decide to throw their hands up in the air and basically punt on the season. Better a lot of veterans in that year 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 sacrifice and a great season from a, from a defense. You mentioned Dobbs, and just before we, before we wrap it up here, Will, I know you're high on Dobbs. Would you bet him to win comeback player of the year? Do you think Hamlin has it wrapped wrapped up after getting on the field and actually making a play on defense? Played a couple of games now. I mean, we, we we've talked about it before. Hamlin is the clear favorite. Do you think Dobbs is still worth a player? No. Dobbs is a great story. Let me ask you a quick question. Did Dobbs die on the field okay. last year? Let me answer the question. No, no he, he did, did not. not. Hamlin's going to win the award. Hamlin has to win. Wasn't Hamlin so on any, the field any, when Buffalo had 12 guys? Wasn't Hamlin like a part of that? Edit that out. We're going to gonna edit that part out too. We're not going to listen to that. That's okay. Uh, irrelevant. Okay. All right. That cost him the game. What, no, was he? I, I, know, I know he was on the field before that, but was he on the field for field goal? I don't think he's. On I field thought he was on the field when they had twelve guys on the field, but I I could be wrong. I don't want to salt Demar Hamlin. Um, he's was, winning was, it. Was it his? He's winning it. Was it his? Fault? Wasn't his fault? Right? It was. It was Ken Dorsey's fault that there were twelve guys. On the yes, field. exactly. It it's all Dorsey's Ken Dorsey's fault. fault. Yeah. Hey, uh, my Miami Harris, fans there, are excited about him. But yeah, I got another stat for you. I just found this in the in the wood chipper. Uh, quarterbacks whose uh, mommies still make their bed are over three <laughs> ATS. Did you know that? <laughs> Wow. Commanders. Commanders Look, minus nine and a half. Max. It, who seriously, there's the commanders nine and a half this week, I know will be enticing, but there's just you can't do it, right? There's just no way. They can't beat they wouldn't beat the University of Maryland by nine and a half. Right. <laughs> nine and a half? I know DeVito's not good, but like, come on. No. That's right. That's can't, that's, can't that's insane. It. Well, I, I don't think any of us could possibly top. That valuable information that Sammy just gave us. I mean, that's all the reason in the it's world. Be you tweeted need to... out later by that same account. Exactly right. Bet, bet, the, bet the commanders minus nine and a half. Doc, doc, documented winners: Tommy DeVito, mommy's make bed, sausage and peppers, meat. By I'm a, I want to go to the DeVito household for dinner on Sunday now. Maybe to take and watch that game uh, you know, over, over a nice little bowl of uh, pasta and gravy. So, guys, fun as always. Until next week, hopefully we will have a. Uh, Successful weekend. Talk soon. Yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of stuff kicked around there. With the, yeah. uh, with, with with the crew, like I I, I don't know. I Commanders Giants. What a, what a yeah. Just just what what what, no. what 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 a great game. Just no. Just just don't just don't do it. <laughs> I mean, maybe I mean, we can't even tease the Commanders in this game. It's just just no. Just well. I mean, you could do. I'm going to essentially tease the commanders in this game because that's my top survivor pick. Oh, week. I've already, Washington's like, already like, logged in for me. Done. Like, like, like how, I mean, it's Tommy DeVito, dude. Like the, the Giants maybe win a game the rest of the year. I know that they, that, that the Giants beat them a couple of weeks ago. 14-7. It was a brutal game. <laughs> Since then, the Giants have been awful. It's a new quarterback. Yeah. Hal should throw all over this team. It's an offense. It's not really going to threaten that Washington defense, which also has given up some plays. Like I, the Commanders are are yeah. are play number one. I'm assuming most people have used 
the Dolphins by now. Clearly, like they're the most likely winner. Yeah. But um, if you want to play the game yeah. a little bit, yeah. If you use the Dolphins, uh, I, I, it, I it, it's Washington. I know the Bills are a little untrustworthy at this point, but I think they're a, a great play against a bad Jets team this week in in a game that they absolutely have to have. I, I know it might be hard because yeah. they've already lost to the Jets, they lost to the Patriots, and they lost to the Broncos, but it's the last chance you're going to get to yeah. use the Bills if you have used them already. And like we talked about earlier in the show, I'd be careful with Houston and Jacksonville. I think there's a really good chance that either that one of those, yep. if not both, lose outright. So I took the Commanders too. I'm sitting good, man. I have I still have the Eagles, the Chiefs, the Niners, and the Dolphins, and the Ravens, and the Bengals still left to use. Good spot. Good spot. Yeah, I took Washington has to be the play here. There's just no doubt about it. I mean, if you have them available, just take them and be done with it. I would think so. I mean, some yeah. people I think might have used them earlier in the year in week one. Week one, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm in the in the one that I'm alive in with a buddy of mine. There are 47 people left from a large number. Yeah. And uh, we're we're using Washington. Yeah, I'm using Washington too. Let's recap your picks before we get to the uh, the best bets here. Uh, so far in the show, you've taken the Tennessee Titans plus seven at Jacksonville. You have the Green Bay Packers plus three hosting the Chargers this weekend. You also have the Cardinals plus five. At Houston, Bear, what's your best bet? It, once the Deshaun Watson news came out, the Steelers-Brown number just steamed down. And it's now a pick em. I played, I actually found a spot last night that the yeah. Browns were one and a half. Yeah. For, and now it's clearly a pick em, So, I, I mean, I'd still, I think the Browns will win this game. It, it, it's, it's the loom, the move is way too much. Yeah, it's still the Browns' defense against the Steelers' offense with Kenny Pickett at a quarterback. Uh, they've been pulling games out of the from the from the jaws of defeat all year long. The coin flip lock, winning out game, trailing it in the fourth quarter. You name it, Steelers have, have won these games. And credit to them, the, the goal yeah. is to win all these games. Like my Tomlin said, our job's to win games. But at some point, you cannot expect this to continue i think the browns with all the naysayers about um their quarterback position right now i think they show up their defense plays well at home a lot of times you'll find when a team loses someone everyone at least for one game will rise up and kind yeah. of raise their level of play i think we're going to see that and I, I i love the browns this week but also watson hasn't played terribly well outside of a little bit of last week right and pj walker is not he's not playing this game but Dorian thompson robinson is i mean they've both shown as backups to be viable backups with the, with, with, the 49 correct. with pj walker and they shouldn't want to seattle with pj so they've they've been viable with having the backup quarterbacks play and so i think this is a really good wedge because i think anytime the steelers are close to a favorite or when you text us last night at plus one and a half for the browns i mean like the steelers is a road favorite it's just absolute no no Absolute no. You just can't do it. I know it's a pick them right now, yeah. but I think it's a good play to make here. I'm not betting against you this week, Bear. I learned my lesson from last good, week. Smart man. Um, I'm taking the Dolphins here, minus 12 and a half, hosting the Raiders. I got this number personally a couple days ago when it first came out because I, I just couldn't believe how low it was. Um, Would you I, still like 13 and a half? Yeah, the, yes. Or well, yeah, I'm at 12 and a half right now. Like I said, I, I like 13 and a half, which are some numbers around, but 12 and a half right now is on FanDuel. So I'm going to take it. Um, the Dolphins and Cowboys, guys, are the best front-running teams in the NFL. When they're playing a bad football team, they blow them out. Go look at the results of all the Dolphins' wins. It's a it's a blow at everyone except uh, except the Patriots early in, in the year in New England. Same with the Cowboys, right? Blow out every the bad teams. The Raiders have five wins against you. Ready? You ready? Ready? Uh, 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 I have here uh, Russell Wilson before he sort of got better in week one by one point. Zach Wilson, they just beat by four points. Mm -hmm. Mac Jones by four. Remember, it was four because of a safety at the end of the game. It should have been two. Mm -hmm. Remember? Okay. Oh, I remember. Uh, I was on the other side. Jordan Love, they beat him by, I think, by four points. Jordan Love by four points. And Tommy DeVito by 1,000. The Raiders are not good. They're 27th in the NFL in scoring offense. They're going to go to Miami, off a bye. They're upset about their last game they lost. It's going to be a little bit warm. Raiders feeling good about themselves. Two straight wins against, checks notes, Giants and Jets. This is going to be a bloodbath. Bear. It's going to be like a 42 to 17 type of game. Dolphins, that's a very college score. Maybe I'll adjust it. 35, 17 type of game. Like, it's it's just not going to be a close football game. Dolphins have shown all year the ability to blow up bad football teams. The Raiders are not good. I'll lay the, 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 the 12 and a half. I go all the way up to 13 and a half, like, like Will and I talked about in, 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 in the gambling group chat. And um, I'm good with taking the big number here. 
Yeah, and I mentioned it a little bit in the group chat. I took an under seven and a half on the Raiders win total this year. Uh, adjusted Dolphins, Chiefs twice at the Colts, Chargers, Vikings, Broncos. Like if you win three games yes. or you, you you win a couple of games there, you get there to get to eight. Right, you have to win three because you're five and five. Yes, you win you win three games there. My hat's off. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you lost the wager. Um, I want to remind everyone: it's not too late to play the free Fox Super Six game for Week Eleven. Just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of ten thousand dollars a week of cash prize. You can also catch uh, Bears column on Fox Sports outlining his picks for the Fox Super Six game this week. So make sure to check that out uh, when it gets closer to, to game day on Sunday. Yeah, hopefully we'll uh, offer some some good advice there. Hopefully we offered some good advice throughout the yeah the show as well. Um, I've never been against you. We've done that. Will's I'm, lost. I have lost. Yeah, it's not I, good. I know. You, you, Don't you, bet against you, the host. You, you come at the king, and you, yeah. you, 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 you know what happens. <laughs> I shouldn't be. You shouldn't be talking. NFL has been better than college, but uh, we're getting we, better in college. Yeah. It's okay. We it happens. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll be okay. We've been better. Well, another another one another one yeah. in the books before before we know it. We'll, well, next week we got Thanksgiving games. Oh. We'll be out early. Then we got Christmas games, and then playoffs will be here before you know it, and you'll be. You'll be in Vegas for the Super Bowl, and I'll be in Turks and Caicos watching. It's going to be a long week in Vegas, buddy. I kind of wish I was there, but I like the beach better. So I appreciate you tuning in, downloading, subscribing, rating, reviewing, checking us out on our YouTube channel, wherever you uh, consume all of your podcasts. Thanks again for all of your uh, your interaction on social media, your suggestions. Jeff, for Sammy, for Will, I'm Bear. Less you bet, more you lose when you win.